I was diagnosed with dystonia when I was 12. Dystonia is a neurological disease that basically means that some part of my brain is just a little bit unusual. For me, it was in one leg, then it was in my right hand, and then it was in my left leg, and then I had tremors, and then um, my speech was very slurred. I sort of lived with it through high school. I somehow stopped writing with my right hand and taught myself how to write with my left hand. So um, overcoming obstacles is just something that I'm used to finding solutions to. After business school, it became really, really tough to walk. And I remember walking 5th to 6th Avenue in New York City. And it's really a long block, and those blocks would take 45 minutes. It just became really hard, and I just started to look like, what would my life in a wheelchair look like? I'm a nerd, this is a major theme of the story. I built a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet was like, what are the pros of brain surgery and what are the cons of brain surgery? But I just sort of did the analysis. I realized I had nothing to lose but to have brain surgery. Eight weeks after, I was walking the same block, 5th to 6th Avenue, and I realized what was taking 45 minutes took four minutes, and I got to 6th Avenue, and I still makes me emotional. I just started like crying and laughing, and I just had never felt that feeling and probably since I was 15 years old. I started running um, December 4th, 2006. For anyone who runs out there, as you know, you always remember your first race and you always remember the escalation process. I did probably a couple more 10Ks and then I was like, if I can do a 10K, why not do a half marathon? The thing with me when I'm running is I actually have to think about every step. So I have to consciously think like, lay my foot flat, lay my foot flat, whereas most able-bodied people just pitter-patter. But I always had my sights on the greatest marathon in the world, which I believe is New York City Marathon. I did it in 2018. It is probably really one of the best marathons you could ever run. That was just a dream come true. I had written about in my GSB essay that my dream of life was to one day run a marathon. It has truly been remarkable what science has done to change my life and to give me the miracle of running. I always tell myself every morning that I have a superhero cape and for me, women's health was just super interesting because we've been fighting for representation in the healthcare field. The beauty about telehealth is you can do it in the privacy of your living room. You can really tell your healthcare needs in a non-judgmental way. I've made a conscious decision to use my platform to talk about how this affects marginalized communities. People who are usually going to get caught in the fray are people of color, people of lowering economic societies, and people in marginalized communities, i.e. transgender people. Simple Health is a reproductive care company which offers services to women and people born with ovaries. Right now, we currently do birth control. So you come online, you go on simplehealth.com, you figure out an online consultation, um, a doctor reviews it, he gets back to you with your medication, and then we send to a pharmacy and you should get your prescription within three to five days. All discreetly from your living room with a judgment-free uh, doctor's appointment. So again, we're super proud of that. So really having a business around longitudinal care around reproductive health. No one's done it yet, but I tell people all the time, this is what the GSB does for you. It makes you dream as big as you can. My thesis at Simple Health is that we have to keep on continuing to fight for people's rights to privacy of their healthcare needs, reproductive care or not. One of the things I'd always said to myself is, when I grow up and be a great CEO, uh, I'm really going to try and create a company where the employee workforce matches the patient or the consumer base. I am super proud to say that we are 47% people of color, we are 46% LGBTQIA+, we're 36% disabled, we're 10% um, single parents, and I believe we're 6% veterans. We don't do this by checking boxes, we just truly do it by attracting the right talent. I had always known I wanted to go to business school since I was probably seven years old and I think my parents thought, what is she talking about? We're like living in Trinidad. How does she even know what business school is? In terms of like what Stanford has done for me, it has just surpassed any expectation that I ever thought about. It has changed my entire life. The way I communicate has made me the leader I am today. 
the power of leadership, the power of empathy, and really the power of communication. So professionally, that's what I took away. Personally, just an incredible amount of like friends and um, I had such a great bunch of classmates that never made me feel different, never made me feel disabled, but I think because of that is really why I can be the great leader I am today or the person I am today because of my tribe. You really are a, a product of your tribe and I think um, that the GSB out of everything else is going to be just such a great tribe.